I want to share with you some prayer requests tonight. People, hundreds literally, writing in because their children are captive or grandchildren, just some of them from Parrishville. The blood of Jesus over my grandson, Sean's mind. He has suicidal thoughts and is eight years old. Pray that God would open my daughter's heart to Jesus and also her husband, Tom. From New York, please pray for my friend's eight-year-old daughter, Haley from Maine, who talks of committing suicide. That's two in a row. Eight years old, losing hope, losing heart, captivated by thoughts of ending their lives. From Oklahoma, it's a teacher. He says, I'm so discouraged and weary from dealing with disrespectful and rude students in my classroom. Please cover me in prayer. I need strength to face each day. It's an amazing thing when you see that teachers can be put in that kind of a position today. From Minnesota, my 25-year-old grandson, who was raised in the gospel by an ordained grandmother, is now addicted to drugs, stays in a dark apartment all day. Please pray for his deliverance. From South Carolina, a friend's 18-year-old son joined a gang, made a vow in the process, and has, and has a pentagram tattoo. He's not active in the gang now. He wants to be free. Constantly getting high. Please pray. Sarah, we're going to pray tonight and believe God for your friend's son. From Mission Canada, please pray for Isaac, a fourth grade student. His parents use drugs all night and sleep all day. He comes to school hungry and often has no food. From Oregon, Sonia says, my son Jacob says the Lord spoke to him that his time is short. I'm broken. I'm sad as a mother. I don't know how to pray for this. I need help. Please pray. Sonia, we're going to pray with you tonight and believe God that he's going to take that thought out of your son's heart and give him a sense of, of a future and what God has for his life. From Colorado, please pray that Jesus will touch my life. I'm 19 years old and I'm living like an old man. I know more curse words than Bible scripture. Robert, we're going to pray for you tonight. From Georgia, pray for my granddaughter, Emma, that God will send her a really good friend at school. She started a new school this year and is feeling left out. From Grand Junction, Colorado, my daughter has been missing for over one month. Please pray we are alone and without housing. This is an urgent need. From New Delhi, India, please pray for the family consisting of me and my six-year-old son. My wife left the family for her boyfriend, colleague, Pray for my wife that she returns to the family. From the U.S., pray for my son David for deliverance from drug addiction and criminal activity. His father served Jesus for years but died of an overdose in 1999. David is 23 years old and came to TSC numerous times. We're having an intervention with him next week. And from the U.S., prayer for Alexa, an 18-year-old friend who has had seizures since she was 10. Her seizures last three to four hours. She needs healing. She's in the hospital. And we're going to pray for Alexa. Now, I'm not suggesting that what I'm about to read to you applies to every case that we have read here. But there was a warning in the scripture that God gave to his people concerning their children. He promised as they were coming out of captivity, he said, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing and I will fight against your enemies and I will surround your families and I will give you strength. And there were so many promises, but also he spoke about what could happen to even his own people if they turned away from him and began to reject him and even go so far as to serve other gods. And here's one of the warnings he gave. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning of verse 32, he said, your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long and there shall be no strength in your hand. In other words, your sons and your daughters will be taken captive and you won't know what to do. The, the power, the strength that I would have given you will seem to have fallen like sand through your fingers and you'll find yourself in a place where your children are being captivated. Verse 41, he says, you shall beget sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours for they shall go into captivity. The alien, or that means the godless who is among you, shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. 
And who can debate but that we are in a godless moment right now in this society? Scorners dominate our schools in this nation. They dominate our universities. They mock morality. They mock anybody that believes in God. Isn't that a fulfillment of what God said would happen to a people when we turn away from him? We begin to worship the blessings perhaps that he's given us and we just simply forget that it was God that gave us everything that we have as a people and we begin to turn away. This happened to the people of God. Now listen to the words of the prophet Jeremiah at a season where this was being fulfilled among God's own people. And in Lamentations chapter 2, verse 17 and onward, he says, The Lord has done what he purposed. He has fulfilled his word, which he commanded in the days of old. He is thrown down and not pitied, and he's caused an enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the horn of your adversaries. In other words, those people who stand against godliness have risen to the top. And those who do in their hearts love God, or at least did, but allowed that relationship to become casual or slack or really not a priority in their lives. Suddenly, this enemy that you never thought would rise is suddenly come to the fore and is dominating the culture of the day. And it seems to have the upper hand in most everything concerning the future. Their heart cried out to the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief and give your eyes no rest. Those who still know that God answers prayer. Those who still have a heart to believe that in spite of our situation with God, all things are still possible. Those of us who believe the words of Jesus when he said, have faith in God for truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. That means out of your borders and shall not doubt, but believes in his heart that whatsoever things he asks for, he shall receive. He or she will have what they pray for. And then he goes on. Jeremiah says, cry, arise or get up, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands towards him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. This has always, always been the pattern and plan of God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now, when God heals the land, that means our sons and daughters come home. That means the captivity in the minds and hearts and spirit of our youth is broken by the power of God. That means we have a spiritual awakening in our generation where people suddenly wake up out of their spiritual stupor that we've lived in as a nation and start going back to the house of God as you are tonight and begin to pray. And when people begin to pray, we begin to believe that God is well able and well willing to meet us and to turn again our captivity. Isn't that the cry? of so many that have written in the scriptures, oh God, turn our captivity. There was one psalmist who said, when God turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. We, didn't, we were praying and we were crying. We didn't expect it to happen so suddenly. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongues were filled with singing. God had done such great things for us that even the heathen among us had to acknowledge that surely God is with them. This is the cry of my heart now, and it ought to be the cry of your heart. I'm asking God to do something so powerful, so radical, so God, it can't be anything but him, that even the godless would have to acknowledge that God is with us in this generation. I believe in the power of prayer. I've lived by the power of prayer. I've sought God and God has answered me. I've watched him do miracles. I've watched him break bondage. I've watched him bring the captive home. I've watched him do what only God can do. And I've seen it over and over and over and over and over through my life. And now I find myself saying, God, I want to see you one more time. Do exceedingly above and beyond all that I can ask or even think. Bring our sons and daughters home. 
Bring them home from the north and from the south and from the east and from the west. Cause the power of hell to have to let them go and come back and serve the living God. Not in our strength, but in our weakness. I believe that you and I have the same authority that Moses once had when he stood before the throne of the most powerful leader on the earth of that time. And not in strength and not in power and with no scheme and with no plan, but simply a confidence in a holy God. He stood before this leader and said, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. And so we stand with the same heart tonight. We don't stand here feebly. We don't stand here with a whine in our voices. We stand here with spiritual authority because he has invited us to the throne of God to find grace to help in our time of need. This is a time of need. Cry out in the night, Jeremiah said. At the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands towards him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. I am not willing to let this generation be taken captive by hell itself. I'm not willing to let the ungodly have the last word in this hour when I have access to the throne of God, access to the mercy of God and access to the power of God. We're going to pray tonight and we're going to believe God to set our children free. The children of those that are writing in from around the world and the children of this nation. I don't have to know how God is going to do it. All I have to know that God is able and he is willing to do it. He's willing to hear my prayer and yours tonight. I'm not going to draw back in unbelief for God Almighty himself said, if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. No, I'm coming boldly to the throne of grace tonight. I'm coming boldly to pray. I'm coming boldly to believe. God is well able. God is well able. He can speak to every young person in this country tonight at one time. He can speak to every heart. He can tell every prodigal son and every prodigal daughter to get up and go home. Come back to the house of God. He can snap his fingers and they'll wake up from the stupor that they're presently in and begin to realize there is something in the house of God for me. I'm going there and I'm going to find out what it is that my heavenly father has for me. Glory to God. God almighty, God almighty, God almighty, God almighty, God almighty. We're not calling out to the lamb tonight. We're calling out to the lion of the tribe of Judah. We ask you to roar against our enemies. We ask you, God, to put fear in the hearts of the evil. Lord, who believe they have the last word in our day. But you are the one who sits in the heavens. Heaven is your throne. The earth is your footstool. God Almighty, we ask you to shake the prison foundations one more time. One more time. One more time in our generation. Set our children free. Satan, we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God by the power of his cross and his shed blood, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no power. You have no power. You have no power. And we command you in the name of Jesus to let our sons and daughters in this nation go. Let them go. Let them go that they may serve God. Father God, in Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, bring home our children. Bring them home, Lord, from every place they are found, every place, every street, every place of hopelessness. Let there be a spiritual awakening. Send a tsunami of your Holy Spirit into our city. Oh God, every borough, every park, every street corner, let there be a sudden awakening in the minds of our young people to the reality of God, 
Hallelujah. Deliver her, Lord, our children in our colleges. Deliver them, God, from the godless. Deliver them, Lord, from those who would turn them against everything that is holy. Deliver them, O oh God, and let the whole scheme of the evil one backfire in his own face and let a mighty awakening God happen in this generation. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ.